Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am MrPhotographer.com. As many of you know, over the past couple of years, I've been an affiliate for Topaz Labs. First of all, I'd like to take the time to thank everyone that has used my link and discount code to purchase Topaz Labs product. I really do appreciate you doing that. With that said, over the last year or so, I've been doing videos on Denoise AI, and I really love Denoise AI. I always say it's my favorite plugin of any plugin there is. And I still receive emails from people um, asking me, well, really, how much better is it than Lightroom? Um, because obviously, uh, people are just trying to justify the cost. Maybe you're not shooting a lot of high ISO and you just need to reduce noise now and then on a high ISO image, and you're wondering, you know, is it worth the investment or not? So in this video, I'm going to try to answer that question. I'm going to process this image uh, in Lightroom with Lightroom's noise reduction and in Denoise AI, and I'll just let the chips fall where they may, and you could decide whether or not you'd like to make the investment for Denoise AI. Now, as you can see over here on the left-hand side, I shot this at relatively high ISO, 3,600, but it also is a night scene, so it was relatively dark, so that just compounds the noise problem. And if I zoom in, you'll see that there is a significant amount of noise on this image. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to make a virtual copy. Uh, on my Mac, I hit Command apostrophe or single quote, and that will make a virtual copy. On a PC, you would hit control apostrophe or single quote. And this will be kind of our reference image of this uh, virtual copy. So we'll go back to the original RAW file. And I already did some uh, processing in Lightroom. I just didn't do anything for noise. So what I'll do is I'll zoom in, and I'm going to go to the Detail tab. And I have everything zeroed out right now. And the way I like to work this, I like to work it from the bottom up. Get rid of color noise first, then luminance noise, then add any sharpening. So what we're going to do is I'm going to move the color noise slider to the right until I see that color noise uh, disappear. You could see it. There's just a lot of little kind of green, some little red dots in there, some blue dots. So we just want to get rid of that. So I'm just going to, what I typically do is I'll move it up to like a, a like a even number like 10, you know. And look, it's gone. <laughs> it already has gone at 10. And then I kind of just want to do just enough. So I would kind of tweak it down. Usually I split the difference between 0 and 10. I'll put it on 5. I get C noise reduction there. So I, I don't always get this fussy with it. I probably would have just left it on 10. Uh, but I could see, well, there is a tiny bit of green dot in there. So let's move it up to maybe 12. And then I could kind of move it around, just make sure that all that color noise is gone. And it looks pretty good. Next, I'll go to the luminance uh, slider, and I'll do the same thing there. And again, I just move it to like a, a, a tens, you know, like 40, 50, 60, something like that. Um, so uh, as I move it, uh, like it's at 80. Wow, that's really high. Um, there's still actually noise there at 80. You could see it, right? Um, we could try to move the detail. Now, if I move the detail slider to the right, it will try to bring back some detail. And you probably noticed that I obliterated a lot of detail on the building. So if I move it to the right, it'll hopefully bring back a little detail. And you could see that it is bringing back detail in that building. And then contrast noise. You could see how as I move that to the right, it's just making the noise worse. So we really want that zeroed out. Um, I'm going to try to get rid of as much noise as possible, but I am really obliterating the detail when I do that. For example, if I take this back down to zero, look at the detail in the building, just the subtle shading in the building, I totally wiped out when I have it at 80. All right, so that, you know, hmm, what can you do, right? So let's, let's put it, I guess, at 75. Um, there's still some noise in there, but I am really zoomed in, all right? And let's add some sharpening, see if we could add some detail back to that building. I am. You could see that looks pretty good, actually. But I did bring back some noise in the sky. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mask the sharpening just to the buildings and the other detail, not and take it away from the water and the sky. And to do that, 
I'm going to go to the masking slider and I'm going to hold the Option key in on my Mac. It's the Alt key on a PC. And when I click down, you get this kind of white rendition, right? And then you could kind of just make it so it's only affecting the building. Wherever it's white, that's where it's applying sharpening. Wherever it's black, it's not applying any sharpening. So uh, that's about the best I think I could do here. Now, I probably could fiddle with it a little more, but I don't think I'd tweak out much more detail and or get rid of any more noise without really losing detail. So this is our Lightroom rendition of the image. Now, I'm going to go to our virtual copy. Now, of course, the virtual copy, I'll zoom in again. You can see that it has all this noise. It's there. So I'm going to take this virtual copy, and I'm going to send it over into Topaz Labs to Noise AI going to right click right on the image go down to edit in and then go over to Topaz Denoise AI. This dialog box pops up I'm going to keep these default settings that I have as default TIFF Pro Photo RGB 16 bits per component resolution of 360 without any compression and we're editing a copy with Lightroom adjustments that's our only option here and we're going to click click edit. Now Lightroom you can see the progress bar in the top left hand corner it's actually creating a TIFF file with those specifications that I just mentioned. So it's creating a third file and it's sending that over into Denoise AI. And I don't know for sure, but I think I just have auto settings on all three modes, AI modes, but we'll double check as we go through. Now, first of all, I want to move it to a similar location like I had the other one. It's not zoomed in as much, uh, but this is good enough. We could get an idea of the three different modes and determine which one is best. Just on auto again. All right, now as I look at it, the denoise mode, which is active now, and it's on auto, I could still see noise, right? Um, this one over here, this is AI clear. And actually that looks really very good. There's less noise than, than um, than there was in uh, Denoise AI mode. So we'll go to low light mode. And again, that's set to auto. And I'm gonna reposition it a little bit. Now we're gonna have to re-render everything. So it's just gonna take a second. And we'll get this one. Okay, it looks pretty good. Now there is some color noise in there because it didn't auto automatically remove that that's not part of the auto settings so I'm going to go to color noise reduction and I'm going to move that up let's say to 10 like I did did in Lightroom I could still see a little color noise in there so I'll move it to 20. It's starting to look a lot better we'll move it to 25 we'll move it to 30. Yeah that looks pretty good. Kind of move it around again. Every time I move it, it has to re-render. So I apologize for that, but we'll just have to bear with me. Now, I'm pretty much decided now. I still have everything on auto. I could come in and tweak some settings, but it looks like uh, AI clear and low light mode are the best. Now, it's no surprise that low light mode would work well on this image because it is a low light image. Um, but I kind of like it just on auto. Uh, with a color noise reduction set to 30. I think it looks pretty good. So we'll click apply. I'm not going to even tweak and try to remove no, more noise or enhance sharpness anymore or anything like that. So we'll just click apply and we'll see what we're dealing with once it comes back into Lightroom. Now in Lightroom, if I do like it, I still then could use Lightroom noise reduction or Lightroom sharpening if I want to tweak it a little bit from this point forward. That is kind of an advantage of using Denoise AI. Not only do you get Denoise AI's um, Denoise engine to remove noise, you could put or couple that with Lightroom as well to sharpen it and remove noise if needed. If needed. So we'll see. It's almost ready to jump over into Lightroom. Maybe someday. There it is. Okay, so it's in Lightroom right now. And I'll zoom in. And um, I don't know, it looks okay. There is a little bit of noise still, just a little. Uh, so what we'll do, um, we'll zoom in here. This is the Denoise AI one now, all right? 
And what we're going to do is we're going to go up to view and we're going to make sure lock zoom position is checked and it is. So then when I go on the other one, it will go right to the same exact spot. Now, this is the Lightroom version of the image. And you could see that there's still a lot more noise there and a lot less detail compared to the denoise image. So there's denoise. Here, let's do this too. Here's the original image. The original image. You can see tons of noise. We'll go to the Lightroom version of the image. This is what I did in Lightroom. So you could see the noise. You could see any detail that I happen to have left. There are some uh, minor artifacts. You can see these artifacts in here just a little bit. Then we'll go to the denoise version of the image. And there's the noise reduction. And again, I had that set on auto. The only thing I man manually moved was the color noise. Um, so there's that. And um, I'd say, you know, it's not as like different as I thought it would be. I really thought denoise would totally blow Lightroom out of the water. It didn't blow it out of the water, but it is better. I think you'd have to admit there's a lot more detail in this building. Like click right around here compared to the Lightroom version. See the Lightroom version is really smoothed out. And if we look, there's a lot more detail there. Then if you look at the overall noise, there, yeah, there's a little bit of noise into noise, just a tiny bit, but I'm zoomed way in. All right. Then we'll go to the Lightroom version of the image and there's more noise. So there's more noise and less detail in Lightroom compared to the denoise image. So you can make up your mind for yourself whether or not an investment in Denoise AI would be worth it to you. Um, again, it might not always be worth it for most people, for many people. Um, you know, maybe you, you just enjoy photography, uh, you know, for what it is, and you're not always shooting low light, high ISO images, and it's not something that you're uh, overly concerned about. But you know, if it is, I think Denoise uh, you may find um, is worth it. Now I could come in here again, I could couple these settings and put one on top of the other so I could bring in some more detail here on sharpening. And there's um, the denoise image with Lightroom sharpening added and then we'll jump over to the Lightroom image, Lightroom only image. And you know, so I don't know, hopefully that helps you make up your mind whether or not denoise is worth the investment. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.